go. <laughs> I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, this is probably one of my biggest, uh, proudest moments. I get to meet one, a new, newer person, a little tri new triangle that we're forming here amongst <laughs> all of us organic nuts. <laughs> As we try to take over the world. Of course, it's Agnes Vivarelli, one of everyone's favorites. We've got Caitlin Moon, who's very uh -huh. dressed up and beautiful today, mind yep. you. Yep. Uh, oddly me, not so much dressed up, but the <laughs> radio style still nonetheless. And uh, hopefully everybody's out there is having a good day. We've got a very, very cool topic. We're going to talk about um, sort of some of this anxiety with the holidays coming up. A lot of big holidays, certainly here in the, in the Western world. But on top of that, too, from the, I think, the Ho'oponopono angle. I love trying to say the word, oh. let alone eat crackers at the same time. But that being said, uh, Anya Svevereldi and Caitlin Moon and uh, awesome conversation. Ta -da. Hello, hello, mm -hmm. hello. Hello indeed. Yes, well we're going to start today with, yes, the holiday. I have been already getting emails about people freaking out. The about... weather outside is frightful. No, we're not, we're not, sorry, we're not singing to everyone. I thought we were, did I, I didn't get the memo, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's so unlike you. You know, I have to say while I think of it, because Dan and I were just on another call with someone else that was needing some help. You had your little shirt off your little shoulder like that. It just looked like one of the little kids at kindergarten, I had to say. I don't know. I didn't, it wasn't me. <laughs> and, uh... You just had that cute little disheveled kid look. <laughs> that, kid, that kid that hasn't shaved for a few days. Hey, when that happens in kindergarten, you get that little hairy one. You're like, really? You already need to shave? You little monster. A little pituitary problem there. I'm hoping something, something <laughs> explainable. I know you got into someone's hair medicine. I don't know. Oh, dear. Anyways, anyways. It's already starting. It's already starting. So, holiday Caitlin. interrupted. <laughs> Caitlin. Yes. Yes, ma'am. What do you think and what do you want to say about holiday anxiety? Because it is a huge thing for a lot of people, not even just the holidays, but the end of the year. Um, I need to hear myself speak. Um, I think that, well, I made a list here of Ooh. things I want to say and talk about that yep. are basically, well, that's what I do, that Caitlin does research. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Dan's learning right now. This is very good. I love it. Awesome. Very nice. I love it. You can I love call it. me the doctor in about four years. <laughs> but um, I run the official Agnes Vivarelli Facebook group, if you want to call that. <laughs> Um, it's called Manifest Stores with an O, United, because yep. that's what John said it should be. And um, I try to give some really practical advice as well as like law of attraction related material, because I believe law of attraction is a tool that helps you live your life. It should not dominate your life. Right. You know? That makes sense. That's a great point. So what I have here are a couple of ideas. I am the queen of holiday anxiety. I used to be the <laughs> biggest bridge. She's laughing because she doesn't believe me. No, I, I just love how you formulated that sentence. I was I, thinking you were going to be the queen of something else. Like, but I didn't expect that. <laughs> and I love Agnes's laugh. It always makes me smile. <laughs> oh my God. So a, a little backstory. Um, with me and Christmas because I used to absolutely, when I was a little kid, I loved the holiday. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the magic of it. I have a lot of really positive childhood memories. And then when I was 12, my brother passed away on December 27th. Sorry. And thank you. And we knew it was going to happen. It was really the most merciful thing that could have happened, but it has left a permanent scar mm. on the holidays. And then, a few years later, about, it's going to be four years ago this Christmas, um, the most important person in my life, someone that I loved unconditionally, um, basically told me that our relationship never existed, never mattered, and to never contact them again. And then on Christmas Eve, about a week after my grandfather had died, I got a box back in the mail with all of my stuff. Ho, ho, ho. So, um... Yeah, the other uh -huh. I was at home, right? It's like, oh, oh. Somebody's a hoe. Dang, but, shoot. 
Yeah, so I'm, I've been in the lowest mm. pinnacle of the holidays. And like, it's just like, what's me. the span of time that all these people, all those thing, horrible, horrible things that die happened around the, what the, uh, yeah. uh, five years? Like, what are we talking about? Like, it'll be 10 years this Christmas that my brother died. Huh. And then, and, and, uh, and wow. then about six years later, and then, but there's always like a lot of tension. Both my parents come from very abusive homes. Like normally to make it easy, I just say both my parents are orphans. So we would never get included in holiday events. I've never celebrated a holiday with my grandparents. There was one year in between this that my parents got invited to my mother's family's Christmas dinner, but I specifically was not. So I was left alone on Christmas day. So I've been sure. at the bottom when it comes to Christmas. And these are some tips that I've come up with that I've personally applied that have helped me. And yeah. So um, basically after a lot of pondering about this and being working with Anya's for a little over a year now, actually it's like, what is it? 16 months? Something like that. I think it's um, longer. Yeah. yeah. So um, That's I kind lucky. of figured out like what causes holiday anxiety? What about all of this has really, upset me internally, what has made me, you know, upset in general with regards to the holiday season. I think this is a universal trope. And at the end of the day, it's all about not feeling loved, not mm. feeling wanted, mm. and not feeling secure. And that can be either not feeling loved from your family, not feeling loved from your, wanted by your significant other, or not feeling secure financially. Mm. So there's a lot of stress. And my first tip um, would be to set a self-love like routine and stick to it every day because self-love is the key in general. Like when I'm helping people on the Facebook group, self-love, self-love, that's always the answer. It's yeah. like I'm a broken record here. Yeah. Um, and another trick that really helped me was kind of researching the holiday and understanding like what is it, where it comes from, because ultimately it's created by commercialism. Like if you want to get into technology, Santa Claus, this is not real. I know it's awesome. I, really? Sorry. I mean, <laughs> he is. I mean, he is. But yeah, I feel bad. Yeah, because there could be children watching this. <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's a shoe falling out of Dan's mouth. You guys, y'all got to see foot and mouth, as they call it. That. The disease, foot and mouth disease. Anyways. I, I, I love the concept of Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, I know he's a great concept, but yeah. I, I want to say, well, Coca-Cola is certainly attached to him at some point down the road. But anyways, yes, there's, yeah. without a doubt, the holiday has become extremely commercialized, uh, at yeah. least here in the Western world and certainly in the United States for sure. Yeah, and um, that brings me to another point that it's supposed to be the season of giving, not the season of getting. Yeah. Like, stop ascribing meaning to like, how much you're worth to a person based off of how much they could or couldn't spend on you, you're going to feel so much better. Because if you're acknowledged, if you're not acknowledged, you shouldn't ascribe any meaning to that. Mm. This is a difficult time of year for everyone. Mm. I totally agree. But you're still getting me something for Christmas, right, Caitlin? Oh, something cool. Something <laughs> I heard. No, okay, just making sure. Just making sure. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, we're, saying, we're saying that to everybody else. <laughs> just, but... but I'm like, teasing, of course, everybody. I'm teasing. I'm sorry. Uh, you can't help me. You're getting me, cold, so. man. I, I know I can't. I'm sorry. Caitlin, you know, he, you know he's naughty all the time. We can't I control am. him. Hey, I'm not always nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I was trying to wait, at least wait till you get in between. I'm sorry. And, oh, and don't so, worry. Yeah. I mean, the three of us all have a lot to say. It's, this is going to be a wild, wild ride. <laughs> apologize. It could be. Oh my goodness. But um, a small tip that is a little bit more LOA that has helped me exponentially at least last year. And like this year, I'm actually really excited. I'm buying a tree. I am watching Christmas movies. Um, it's finding like small things. And this is something I talk about on the Facebook page a little bit with LOA. If you're in a pothole, if you are having a rough time, finding something small, even if it's a color that you like, a texture, the fact that like leaves are hanging on a tree, that's really cool. They make oxygen. They've got chloroform. This is a really cool concept. Um, so like, I really like Christmas lights. I think they're beautiful. I think they're fun. I love decorating. I love baking. Like, I love that 
that. So instead of like being like, oh, my grandparents never loved me. My mom's nuts because my brother died. No, I'm going to make gingerbread men. Last year, I made anatomically correct gingerbread men, and they were a hit. Anatomically correct. Thank you for saying yeah. it, because I don't know wow. if that would have come out right out of my face. Anatomically correct. Gee, That's I would have awesome. liked to have seen that. Did you have I'll, I'll male and female mail. ones? Or? Okay. Yes, and some in between. Wow. Um, gender neutral. I like. Very good. Got to keep it kind of current for today. I like that. Very good. Very good. And um, this next is that radical out in your neck of the woods, kind of, or is is uh, Ireland kind of like hip to these these sorts of nuances that us Westerners um, seem to parade well, around? Just in case everybody like missed my first video with Anya's or like isn't in the loop, I currently live in Dublin, Ireland. I'm doing my PhD in medieval literature at Trinity College, and I'm doing the coursework for my third master's in Old Irish. I'm from the real rural area outside of Baltimore, Maryland, originally. And it's like when people ask me, oh, where are you from? I generally go, <laughs> have you met Faulkner? <laughs> like, it is that really small town, narrow mentality. But Dublin, which I love, I love living here. It has that small town feel, but it is also a city. Like there's the ballet, there's the opera, there's all sorts of museums I can go to anytime I want. And it also has that metropolitan mentality. It's like basically everyone here is pansexual. It's like you walk up to a bar, you start chatting with someone, and I either like, hey, or they're like, oh, no thanks, and then you walk away. Nobody's offended. Nobody's weirded out. For people in the audience uh, that, like myself, that don't know what pansexual is and have vivid oh. imaginations, please help me with that word. I'm sorry. Yes. I don't um, yes. Pansexual means you're attracted to everyone, regardless of gender or binary or physical parts still still people though obviously right yeah. animals don't come in okay good i uh, know so uh, just yeah. going back to the gingerbread men what did you say they were anatomically correct okay so you put the meat and the potatoes on there <laughs> some peas and some carrots <laughs> Wasn't me this time. All these new it terms. Me. It was all we are we're out of the loop with the terminology, Dan. It's contagious, no, isn't it? I, I finally <laughs> infected you. Obvious <laughs> uh, and I are bad. Like we spend a lot of our time together talking about sex drugs and <laughs> Nice, nice. You're not supposed to tell everyone, Okay. <laughs> Definitely the other two. But I mean, I'm still coming to your party next weekend, right, Anya? Oh. I mean, I'm just saying we got a the gingerbread party. Mm, heck yeah, I'll dress yeah. up. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, anyway. So, um, this, this, uh, by the way, one way to keep your holidays lighthearted is uh, joke around like this a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, anyway. But but here's got more, yeah, here's a more practical tip. If yeah. you're at a holiday party with your family and you've got like the racist uncle who's, you know, <laughs> yeah. doing his thing, there is something called um, showing up for racial justice. S-U-R-J, Holiday Mobile Hotline. And you can text S-O-S -S -O -S, or send a turkey emoji to 82623. A turkey and emoji. A turkey emoji <laughs> in America. I, and, that's the one thing that I felt that was finally, you know, was missing from the holiday. And you're, thank you. That's yeah. it. Well, the thing is, you send them the text and they give you a list, like a category. They're like, what, what's the discussion? Is this immigration? Is it Donald Trump? Is it all these things? And then you type the number back and then it gives you a list of polite but direct things to reply to this conversation. Uh, from a turkey avoid emoji, confrontation. From a turkey emoji. Look, I would That's love awesome. to meet the mastermind behind that. Right? That like Brilliant. I'm going to take something that's really good and then I'm going to interject some sort of really heated, debated, yeah. hated topic that's bound to upset you on this glorious day. Here you go. That's, that's brilliant, by the way. Caitlin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely I told brilliant. you I did research, man. I yeah, know. You're, you are the research queen. I have you to bring it. That's all I'm saying. You've got like, uh, is it written out or is it typed? Is it on a laptop? What, how are, I'm just curious how you, how you operate. Uh, it's actually like, called Caitlin's Guide to Cuffing Season. Cuffing? You haven't heard that one? No. Okay, so, and this okay. is another thing.
thing that brings in anxiety. Haven't you noticed how having words that you don't know? I hear you. I know it's scary. I know. I, what the hell's it? Uh, I'm sure, sure, like in your line of work, you get a lot of emails this time of year of people being like, "I don't have my SP. I'm not married. I'm alone. I'm so sad." That's because of a social phenomenon called cuffing season, and this is not a Caitlin term. This is an actual term. Okay. And there's statistically there's a statistic evidence that this time of year people couple up a lot more than they normally do um basically because of the social expectations of the holidays and the fact it's getting colder and being alone in the winter is no fun so a lot of people who are trying to manifest an sp who are you know feeling that sort of negative pressure don't recognize that these little relationships that are forming now that everybody's like just coupling up all of a sudden they're not designed to last they're not built out of self-love they're not built out of a genuine connection they are built out of social pressure so you don't need to do that you don't need to do that to feel happy or love that's probably a really bad idea oh so what do you recommend uh, to to get around that? i mean what do you think the the core issue is when when someone's getting together this time of year just to get together right for some cup it's a lack of self-love that's all it is yeah so are they better probably like maybe to be, spend it alone and just be like yeah no it's cool it's i enjoy the holidays like being a being a you know being alive and being with family or being in nature if you're I don't know, like whatever your scenario is like i mean but, that's my take on it i don't think that being with someone out of desperation is a very loving thing at all yeah yeah obviously. i mean it's not it's not self-loving and it's definitely not loving to them yeah no i agree i agree so i mean I think it's best to just be present in the moment, find something, something small that brings you joy, and then just build on that. Keep finding little things like Abraham Hicks talks about, and just get through one day at a time, because I, I know at the most, it's only six weeks out of the year. Yeah. And they might be difficult, but they're going to pass. So do you recommend uh, putting decorations out and stuff if you're kind of a uh, bah humbug on the holidays? Do you still do it or do you not do it? Do you, um, do you find yourself gravitating to places that have it and are all bright and colorful and got those little, you know, glowy balls and all that crap? Or how do you, where are you, what, what's your advice for navigating, I guess, those waters? I think it's a person to person decision. Like for me personally, I'm really looking forward to the holidays because I'm going home and I'm seeing my dad. And he and I love to decorate. And my dad is Santa Claus. He is magical. He actually will often dress up as Santa Claus and take toys to needy children. Mm. I mean, he is that. Cool. Is that why you moved to Ireland? Because it's that much closer to the North Pole? Yeah, I'm trying to like get a business deal here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. The travel would be certainly less. And, and the temperature difference, obviously, is not as extreme. So that's good. And you know, um, leprechauns off season can work as elves. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's very cool. I, I thought they had a union, so I didn't know how that worked out exactly. But that's very good. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, it's very good. Very good. Yeah. Nice. So, but I guess I mean, but that to me seems like that's a really, like your whole the topic I love about this, and I don't know if we key in on the hope hope on a pono side of that, if not, or but I'm wondering like because there are a lot of people that are going to be a little bummed <clears throat> that they're not in the situations they'd like to be already this time of year, holiday mm -hmm. season, the crazy season. There's all sorts of nicknames for it. Um, and certainly you're looking forward to it. You're going to be with your father and that's wonderful. But for somebody that's had 10 years or so, uh, where a number of pretty, pretty awesome things have happened, obviously you've gotten through that. You're demonstrating that for sure. What, but what are some of the things you've done in the past to kind of help you, uh, get to this place where here you are celebrating something 10 years later? That's like a, that's like a pretty awesome. You know, that's like, that's the takeaway here as far as I'm concerned. Like, that's the success story here. It's like, oh my gosh, how, how'd you do that? And how, how do you help other people like uh, get through a, a season that's meant to be spent with dot, dot, dot. And here you are um, not with dot, dot, dot. So uh, I'm just wondering, I think that's something we, I don't want to gloss over that. I think there's well, got to be some. Oh really yeah. I think that again, not to sound like a broken record, but focusing on your self love and realizing that, you know, you love yourself, you're fine. There are, it's just a day. It's just a day on a calendar yeah. and keep working on yourself. Try to find something good 
in this moment, in this day, in this season, because it's going, if, again, it will pass. And this time next year, in a future reality that already exists, you will be spending it with that person. So if you want to, I don't know, just imagine that this person is sitting on the couch with you. Imagine that you're already together. Go buy them a small gift. Go buy them a card. Do something fun that you would like to do together. Make a list of things you will do next year. Start planning. Right. Look to the future with hope and expectation. Right? Yep. Maybe write a letter to Santa, like scripting, but dear Santa, I want this and that with this person. Now, from the standpoint of some of the, some of the challenges you've experienced, I, I believe you mentioned a couple people had passed away, even their brother starting off the, the whole thing. Now, self-love obviously, uh, I guess, plays a part certainly from the relationship standpoint a lot and in life in general. But when, when you're, when your uh, brother passed away, I mean, was it self-love that you felt was challenged or was it more the lonely factor or the fact that you were thinking about somebody that was, was currently missing? Like, I guess from those standpoints, what were some of the, the keys and tricks that you used to get through the holidays? Because it is, I, I've, I've had a few friends that have lost people and certainly right around the holidays even. Uh -huh. And it's, it's a very challenging time. And certainly relationships, I think, are similar. So from that standpoint, yeah. self-love is a big component as well. But I think from the standpoint of like with your brother and I think it was your mom, I think was, you know, uh, my, you... my mom is still alive. But, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, was, I thought there was my, a, another her person. father passed away at Christmas okay. time as well. Right. Um, but um, when my brother passed away, I was 12 and I had not, I came across the secret when I was 16. That's what helped me overcome a nearly fatal brain injury. Wow, I feel like there's like, a, Anya, she should have given me reading to be, you didn't this is amazing. Out. I know, I'm sorry, I did not, I, wow. So a near fatal yeah. brain injury. Yeah, uh, I had a of, It's better he has genuine surprise. Yeah, yeah right, because. Prepared surprise. God knows oh, what crazy boy. stuff would have come <laughs> out of it. wine. Yes, no, wow, okay, so, wow, okay. So we got okay. that also sprinkled in a little bit of. I'm gonna start with this because, okay. Um, Life story, this is stuff I don't even really talk about with my friends, so forgive me if I'm a Anyone can be cheerful about Christmas after a lot of bad Christmases. I mean, you're the one I want to listen to, so please, tell, oh. tell me. Well, tell thank me. you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, when my brother passed away, I was just about 12 years old, and it was Christmas time. It was the very last time I got to dance in the Nutcracker, it was, which was very important to me. I'd done that since I could basically walk. Um, and there was a lot of loss that year. I mean, my mom went into a state that she has not come out of and she does the best she can and I love her and that's all I can really say about it. Um, but it really was a hard, hard situation to go through. And what made it worse was the fact that my parents had taken me from the school I'd been in for many years and put me into this Catholic school, thinking that it would be infinitely better. And instead it was horrific. I mean, we are talking Lord of the Flies and I was, I don't know, a pig on a spit. And the worst thing that happened in that school was one day during religion class, um, the teacher who hated me, like this lady threw a stapler at my head, um, was talking about he who is without sin shall throw the first, the first stone. Time. And I was walking alone in the parking lot that was our playground and a rumor had gotten around that I had killed my brother. The children are lovely. And Agnes has heard this story and she's cringing. And I'm walking alone and I'm kicking a rock and my head is down and I'm feeling terrible. I, I have no concept of self-love at this point. Who does at 12 years old? Yeah. And I feel something hit me. And I thought it was like a hailstone, so I ignored it. And then a couple more things hit me. And I look up and my grade and the surrounding two grades are encircling me and they throw rocks at me until I'm on the ground in a bloody mess. And I still have some scars from it, it's fun. So yeah, that's what I associate with like religion and that whole time frame is surrounded in that moment. 
And Caitlin, why was it still in Hawaii, teachers, Ohio, or was this in there Ireland? No teachers like supervising oh. that. There were. They did nothing because they didn't want the legal issues. Wow. Yeah, it was a horrible place, and I do not recommend pulling your child out of the environment that they know and putting them into a new one. Mm, I don't recommend yeah. stopping all of their activities because when you have a loss yeah. like that, your kid needs something to look forward Familiarity to. Familiarity too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, a safe place too, maybe, where I don't want to get pelted by rocks. That might yeah, be. Nice. Jesus Christ, oh my. So yeah, that was not fun. No. And it put me in a very low place for like middle school, high school, everything. But then I started ice skating when I was, um, I got, I had been ice skating as a child, but I got back into it maybe the following year. And I started training for the Olympics because I was very good at it. And when I was just about to turn 16, I landed a double axle combination on the back of my head. And I completely destroyed the vestibular that's in here that controls your balance. I fractured my skull. I almost severed the retina in my right eye. I have 10% loss of brain function. I still have complications from this. Um, so I was legally blind for three months. I spent eight months in hospital relearning how to walk, read, and feed myself. And in that time frame, they didn't think I was gonna make it. And my dad, bless his soul, got me a Walkman the first day I was in the hospital. Yeah. And he bought me like every audiobook he could find because I, I love to read. I'm very passionate about literature and I read everything I get my hands on. And the first book he put into this Walkman was The Secret. Hmm. And I listened to that on a loop for the next eight months. And I fully believe that that the law of attraction, positive thinking, visualizing is what made me have a full recovery. Mm. Absolutely. So major props to Rhonda Byrne. What, 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 um, did you ever ask him why he picked that? Cause that's he, a pretty, he doesn't even do the law of attraction that you've no. said. Or did he just I mean, like he grab to, like, like Tony Robinson <laughs> and like such, but um, he said he liked the cover. Wow. He thought I would like it. It is a cool looking cover. I mean, it is beautiful reds and oranges and stuff. Yeah, it's lovely. Wow, what a life-changing moment. Life-changing, those forks in the road. I mean, you have and, and, overcome a lot in your, well, you're not old, you're young. <laughs> right, very young. And, and so that's what turned it around for you was that like really once you were kind of uh, given that the power of the secret, shh, don't tell anybody. But once they were given that secret, to you then you were able to kind of start utilizing that that understanding and, yep. and make your Christmas is better and your holidays better I mean holidays were always a little rough I was the thing that made them rough is that I believed that they were rough and I was wrapped up in the negativity I was wrapped up in the state of my mother I was wrapped up in not having an external family and all sorts of things like that like it's it's pretty much just me and my dad and so we typically talk about how things are focus based universe and all that good stuff. So do you think a lot of it maybe was when you started focusing on uh, different outcomes or yeah. just enjoying it for what it is or seeing the, seeing the glasses, you know, one tenth full <laughs> or whatever, you know, how it happened to be. I think the main change for me was when I started focusing on the elements that I really enjoyed as a child and I started to appreciate them just as intensely and I don't want to say physically, but viscerally, as an adult, like I intensely loved dancing in the Nutcracker, so I love the music. I focus on that. I love getting people presents. But, like that is my favorite thing to do. All year round, I start planning for Christmas. Anytime I see something that a friend of mine will like, I get it. And also that like helps financially because at the end of the year, I don't have like this giant credit card bill. Um, Mainly, it's just focusing on the small things, individual things, manageable things that you can do that brings you an element of joy. And also, I mean, kindness, kindness to others, but most of all, kindness to yourself. And self-love, we talk about it a lot. We talk about how good it is to feel good. We talk about how important it is to focus on things that make us happy. But at the end of the day, sadness, grief, that's part of the human experience. And 
when you're having those down moments, which I do, everybody does, I think, I, I think to myself how grateful I am to have had something that has brought me conversely as much joy and also how grateful I am I am able to feel something as intensely. Mm. No, no, I'm wondering, um, Anya, help me, mm. I guess, but is there, where does the, in a situation like this, and there's so many obstacles that uh, lovely Caitlin, uh, Caitlin here has uh, had the pleasure of dealing with, how, how, do, how do you pull the hope up? Ho'oponopono kind of concept into this. Mm. Like, I feel like there's got to be a way to wrap that in, and somehow, because I mean, again, like I, the idea of uh, some of the challenges we're going to have coming up over the holidays. Obviously, thinking about missing so and so is not going to help that go away. So you focus more on maybe like uh, Caitlin was saying, like family or things you enjoyed, or maybe just some small thing about it. Maybe it's decorating, just putting that time into it and focus on it and making everything look beautiful because you want to. Mm. put your surroundings in that way but you know when it comes to the whole ponopono aspect of it how do we how do we fold that in at this time of year as well well i think it's looking at the internal stuff like you go okay here's the external stuff which is christmas makes me feel lonely you know, not wanted, that I don't belong, because those are the main ones that seem to come up for people because they've got estranged families or they've got people in the family that have got addictions. It brings up all the big don't wants right in your face for some reason at the end of the year or between Christmas and New Year. It seems to, to um, pop up. So you go, okay, well, this stuff is already in me. Otherwise, that stuff wouldn't bug me. So you've got to go, okay. I need to dissolve something within me. I mean, I personally really dislike Christmas. Why? Because I worked in retail for 15 years yeah. and I was in shopping centers and I hear that music and I feel yeah. intensely, ooh. But that's my experience of having been in those environments that causes that experience. So what do I do? I totally avoid shopping. I totally avoid shopping centers and I totally avoid being anywhere where there's lots of blaring music and screaming children. Well, it starts those, earlier and earlier too. Yeah. Man. It's like friggin' July yeah. and they're playing Christmas music. You're like, come on, man. Yeah. The main department store here in Dublin, Brown Thomas, they put up the Christmas trees in August. It's just, but there's a desperation about Christmas now because of online shopping. Yeah. Everybody's got this desperate selling vibe. Well, that's the biggest time of year, the most money spent. Mm. It's like, I got to get my little hands on some of the. I know. And the thing is, it's not even about money. It's not no. even about shopping. It's not even about Christmas trees. It's not even about Santa Claus. It's meant to be about like what Catelyn was saying about giving. Yeah. And yeah. you can't give if you're in a lonely, needy, desperate state. So, you know. I and I think it goes back to Caitlin's point, by the way, too. And, and I think you made a very good one, but it's that society kind of aspect of it and marketing. I mean, certainly mm. here in the United States, the, the commercials that you hear in radio and TV that bombard you with how, you know, you're obviously not good enough to so use this deodorant or whatever, right? So like yeah. all the stuff that you were bombarded with too during this time of year, kind of forcing you into, I should be with people. I should be in groups. Mm. I need to buy more stuff. I need to give more gifts. I need to be the cool uncle yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it, it's it's a challenge from that standpoint, I think, as well. Well, I find the more people I'm around at Christmas, the worse I feel. I like it to just be me and my mom because we're in a country that doesn't have any snow and it's the middle of summer when I have Christmas. So, you know, having grown up in Canada, Canada was a cold weather climate and, and Christmas meant huge amounts of snow up to here. So I think what you grow up with has a big impact on what you either really love or really hate and what that brings up. So, yeah. um, and, and a bit like what Caitlin was saying about her brother. I mean, my dad's been dead since 2009 and I would always go and spend Christmas with my mum and dad and my brother, if he was around. So when one person in the family has gone, it leaves kind of like this ghostly outline of a hole yeah. of where that person, <clears throat> excuse me, of where that person used to be. So it's like, you've got to kind of go and sit at these meals with people and notice the absence of people. And that's difficult. It is. I mean, I find, you know, I'm always still aware that dad's not there. 
even though he was totally silent and an introvert, there's the absence of him. So yeah, that impression and, in the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for me growing up and even continuing on today, like this is a conversation I have with my mother regularly. The fact that we were never invited or included into mm. family gatherings is kind of like the only thing she thinks about this time of year. Why don't mm. they love me? Why don't they want me? Why yeah. are we not good enough? And I'm like, mom, it's not worth the stress. And this yeah. brings me to another point I kind of wanted to talk about in this situation, which is when to revise and when to walk away. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you can revise something. you can revise some people until the cows come home. If you don't feel internally that this is gonna work, it's not yeah. gonna work. Like my yeah. mom's family, I could I could put some effort into that. I don't want to because they're not one, they're not good people. Um two it's not worth the effort. It's better to walk away, feel good about yourself, feel good with the people around you because yes, yeah. you can pick your family. I'm proof <laughs> of that. Yeah. Um, and just focus on what little comfort and joy you can find. Yeah, yeah. And you create that for yourself. Yeah. You do create it for yourself. And you know, we, we all like different things. I mean, I went to France, when was it, last Christmas to be with my entire <clears throat> hierarchy from, you know, generations worth of people. And I just, I'm so not used to that because it's always been, our family's been away from, you know, the mothership <laughs> for so long. It was lovely to see everybody, but I feel, I felt, you know, I do get overwhelmed by that amount of stuff. Um, it's like, we all have different things that we really love and other things that we really would prefer to, you know, to not have or not do. So you got to work with what you are and who you are and coming back to the Ho'oponopono, it's like, you got to go, okay, if this is in front of me, and I'm not comfortable or I'm not, I'm feeling intense negative emotion. And this is off the topic of Christmas, but if you've got something that has that effect on you. And I remember Dr. Hugh Len saying when this woman came and stood in front of him and said she was, um, she had cancer and she was terminal. He didn't, he didn't go, Oh, that's not very good for her. He said, what if she's in front of me, what is it in front? What is it in me? I have to dissolve. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, when I first heard that, I thought, what? That's, she doesn't even, she's got nothing to do with you. But, you know, that was 10 years ago before I understood that. And it's like now you go, okay, wow. If you're looking at taking responsibility for 100% of everything that shows up in front of you, even a total stranger that's got an illness. And Dan, you and I have just come from an hour of spending time with somebody that really needed our assistance. Right. If you apply that to what we have sat through for an hour prior to this, you go, okay, what is it? It's not about them. What is it that I still have to look at in me around the, the stuff that was discussed. So you do that every day, every day, every day with every client, with every relative, with every colleague, with every SP, with every everything. What is it in me? If it's a good experience, hooray, fine. But if it's not, you go, okay, what have I got going on inside of me that that's there? Yeah. And that takes a lot of work to constantly discipline yourself to do that with every interaction. Not, not just that, but for a lot of us, it takes a lot to be able to look at ourselves and say, yeah, no, I was actually the one that was wrong. Oh, yeah. It was me that was wrong. I, mm. I, like we've got... We'll get that bright red flush of, of blood up to the head when we realize it, right? Like you just like, oh man, it's like that instant embarrassment, that, mm. that feeling that like it, it sucks, but there are times when we're wrong and, and <clears throat> it's harder. Yeah. It's funny is it's harder to fix other people and it's really that, you know, by fixing yourself, you actually mm. solve the outside stuff, but. Mm. And that's, I think, kind of what the doctor, what was, or who, I don't know his name, but the, the, the gentleman was saying to, mm. um, you know, what is it that needs to be healed in me? It's kind of like the same thing. It's like this it is existing right now. Yeah. Why is that in me? Mm. You know, I had, I had someone ask me not a, a while ago via email, 
they said, can I ask you, I want to ask you a question about Ho'oponopono. I thought, okay. So I'm reading the email and, it, and they said, okay, if, if, if you are dissolving the part of you that creates the external world, how does that apply to you working with clients? And I, I was, I, I said, well, I, I'm in a position that I obviously have to continually work on my self-love and continually work on my, I'm good enough. Otherwise you guys wouldn't be in front of me. It for, That's uh, my lesson. That's my life thing, lesson. The thing I say to teachers in most part, right? If you're going to be teaching anybody that's out there right now that con considers themselves a coach or a teacher or any of that, you are going to have things active in you that's mm. going to come from other people, but you've been there and you've had that active in you and you know how to swim in that. And that's what most of the teachers have to be able to do. They have to be comfortable in all of that crazy stuff uh, and still be able to, and still be able to find their Northern star, right? Still be able to find their point of reference and, and, and be able to help somebody. So it, I, I think that's part of being a coach, I think is the fact that you're always going to have stuff come at you. It's just yeah. not gonna, Put my Let hand it, up there. Caitlin's got yeah. a hand up. Oh, I was, I'm looking at the camera, not at the side. I'm sorry. Oh, that's great. I love it. Go ahead, Caitlin. Uh, well, like, I think this is where two concepts that we talk about in LOA come together really concisely. Working it on yourself internally and everyone is you pushed out. Yeah. And I think this is where it all comes from. Like, if you work on yourself, if you work on whatever you want to term it that blockage, that void, whatever, kind of two conflicting terms there, um, then it reflects in the people around you. Yeah. So let me ask you this. If you've perfected yourself completely and you've gotten yourself to a point where no negativity comes out or nothing, right, and you're going to be a coach, uh, does that mean nobody ever comes to you with problems? I don't think it's possible to perfect yourself. I think that humans are perfect in their imperfections. What does it say about me? Because I've got a lot of clients that <laughs> we're, we're, self -love we're certif specific certified person. organic <laughs> nuts. And yes, I think we announce what's wrong with us oh, all the time. What's wrong with us all the We've time? We've just learned to to wear it with pride. Hang on, let me get it off the shoulder a little bit. <laughs> a little <Why> not? <laughs> Your little neck. It just looks so cute and oh. vulnerable. Cute little neck. <laughs> You'll have to tell your SP to put a little, um, something like, 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 oh. <laughs> like oh. no, just a little right there. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little love I had left over from yesterday. <laughs> left over from yesterday. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. But it, no, it is a really interesting thing because you think, okay, what do I spend a lot of my time doing and with what type of people? What's the reoccurring thing? And for me, it's, it's endlessly talking about self-love, specific person relationships, and why isn't this working? Now, I think if I do that and go, okay, well, what is it? Why is that always in front of me? It's because I still need to dissolve that stuff within me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anybody in front of me anymore if that was totally healed in me. And like you said so well in an interview that we did, Dan, that I still remember, and it still makes me laugh, you said, Anytime I start to think too highly of myself, <laughs> you can finish the sentence. Usually the rug gets ripped out from under me. That's probably what I said, but exactly. yeah. Exactly. It's it like out. bang. You know. Life keeps me humble, that's for sure. That Life for sure. keeps us humble, boy oh boy. Caitlin, I, I, yeah, that's good advice right there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We Go got ahead. sidetracked. No, you had your hand up and then we, Dan and I just sort of. Oh, I forget. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh god when it's three-way it's even more there's more right? distraction and nuts going a on menage a trois. yeah it is a menage a trois today let me just say i'm, I'm smiling I'm the, I'm the um french australian wedge between the usa today yeah mm. you are the well and then with the kind of um doubling in the middle i guess so yeah. uh, i don't know where the hell that works where are you you're in england right now aren't you Anya? I'm in London. Yeah, London. Caitlin's not far from me in Ireland. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And there's hey, such a love, such a love I, between those two countries. It's true. Right? <laughs> England well, and well, Ireland. <laughs> Caitlin, just for the viewers, because I love your dress and I'd like to see it. Oh, yeah. I really love Frida Kahlo, artist, and Caitlin's got a Frida Kahlo dress, which I'm really no jealous way. of. So look at, the, look at the print. 
Wow. It's got Frida. It's got all her paintings. I'm going to stand on the chair here. Yeah, it is so beautiful. It's a work of art. Oh, gorgeous. You want to see the shoes? Of course. She's a, hello. They're going to be Dorothy shoes. Yes. Oh, of course they are. <gasps> wow. They really oh, are Dorothy. Oh, oh, that'll take you to Kansas for sure. I'm trying to save on airfare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your just dad click be your happy. heels together three times and you'll be there. <laughs> Doesn't work. Oh, well, you two organic certified nuts. Have you got any lasting parting words? I can't believe that's been an hour. It goes so quick every time. It really does. It really does. Uh, no, I, I found it, uh, I mean, just oh. incredible. Uh, Caitlin, wow, what a story. I mean, you've, I know. you've surmounted so much. And, and she's uh, in such a young Yeah, she's like, years. She's like it's like it's like like you're made of Teflon, like it just bounced off you, and there's little, you know, and you're just like, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna keep being happy because, mm. uh, and so that's a well, more power to oh. you. That's amazing. It was super nice to meet you too. Thank you. It was wonderful to be here, and yeah, if you ever want to do this again, let me know. Absolutely. Fabulous. Before we go though, yes, you know, Dan, I wanna, I want you to hear this. Caitlin, having had the head injury from the ice skating accident, now tell Dan how many languages you speak since then. Lord. Modern Irish is my 17th language. My goodness gracious. Holy crud. Do you just like, do you just constantly spit out all sorts of different words from different languages when you're talking and you're, are you really good at keeping it under the language that you're intending to speak at the moment? It depends on how related the languages are. Mm. Like modern Irish and old Irish are very similar in a lot of ways and very different in others. So that becomes problematic. Um, a lot of my languages are dead languages for research. Like I deal with um, basically the 8th century and a little up to the 15th century. That's where I situate myself. So I've got like all sorts of different types of Latin and whatnot, but it, it really depends on the context of what I'm working with. Speak like Caitlin, things. do you have a photographic memory? Um, not too much. I, I mean, I just know what works for me sometimes i do like take a snapshot of like a chart or something in my head and i can tell you like what page number that's on and all that but it depends i, I on whether or not i feel emotionally able to do that i like if i feel confident enough if i feel like oh i can do this i'm good at this i remember that yeah if language that i have been told oh this is really difficult like um mm. Attic Creek, i'm not very good at um that's because people are like, oh, this is so hard. Yeah. So okay. well, that was very, you got an amazing open mind. That's awesome. I know. She's a awesome. Mind. And it's a, I have brain damage. I yeah. am technically disabled. Well, sounds like you have brain enablement is what it I sounds know. like. I know. Enhancement. Yeah, exactly. enhancement. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so she's jarred an amazing. Something, jarred something in the right way. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. No, I, mean, I do have lingering negative effects from the head injury. As I said, I am technically disabled, but I don't let that dominate my life. Right, right. Wow, so, yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing. It is amazing. Too. Wow. Did you oh, ask it's... her, did I hear you ask Dan? <laughs> what? Did she speak Sanskrit? Did you say that? Yeah, I, I did say that. I was just, but I was shocked. I don't think that's per, uh, even a verbal language, is it? I mean, I, 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 I meant that as a, I'm, you're the expert, but I'm just I'm trying to be funny. Well, it's one of those, it's kind of, I think it's a dead language technically at this point. Um, my best friend in Lo who lives in London actually is Indian. She's a Hindu by faith. And she says all of her prayers in Sanskrit. Wow. Okay. Lovely. That's awesome. Lovely. Awesome. She just like bust open the Dead Sea Scrolls or whatever and just start like twist Aerith off thou thou eon, like whatever the hell. And that would somehow... You'd just be able to read that stuff right there, huh? Um, no, but I... <laughs> it probably would sound different than what I... I'm sure. I've gotten to manhandle some books in the Trinity College Library, which has been pretty cool. Go, girl. You manhandle that book. I love it. Mm. <laughs> on, on that note... Dan Radio Sal. What can I say? <laughs> we might. Anya, thank you. <laughs> Oh, God. I have issues. You all know that. You're an organic nut. I'm nuts in my own way. I've got issues, too. Okay, yes. well, well, welcome hey. to the triune. That's why people, you know, that's why These we gravitate nuts. towards each other. Coconuts. That's right. yeah, that's organic sweet. coconuts. Ah, that's even... It just feels tropical to me right now. You, <laughs> you know, this Kate is my... Uh, I will... 
put I'll put the manifesto manifestors United link down yes. below and and I will copy all that stuff out of Agnes's video because she always uploads quicker than I can. So <laughs> do you just copy and paste? That's a good That's idea. Pretty, well, at least all, all your guys' yeah. links. Yeah. Like recording because I'd like to say a few words about the group. Like after or during the recording? I think we're. Are I'm still recording. recording. You're still recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah still I, I edit though. Agnes is the one that's a little more. I'm a bit. Okay. Snippy. She's a little Go more ahead. snippy. So I, I know that the group is going to get a lot of attention or more attention that's been getting from this. Um, the group is not a specific person group. It is a you focused group. <laughs> Self love techniques that are working for us. It is designed for people who are following Agnes's channel or you for quite some time who have a routine, who know what they're doing, who are familiar with the terminology. It's not. <laughs> well, what, what is the group name? I mean, let's at least plug that. Let's get that out there. Manifestors United. He wasn't Manifestors. listening. I, he no, wasn't I was listening. <laughs> I just wanted to say it again. Yeah. I hadn't memorized it on, yes, but. Did I, you? Yeah, I was listening. Wow. Manifestors with an O, with an O. With an O, I was about to quiz oh, you on that. With an O. Well, John Ferrande said it should be with an O, so it's an O. Oh, well, there you go. Manifestors. I'm, I'm manifestoring. Manifestors. I don't know. Well, I in America, like our dialect, you really can't tell the difference between an O or an R at the end of words. Well, we just abuse any freaking like English word. We abuse every word we touch here in the United States. That's what we do. <laughs> if you guys made a word in your language, watch what we do to it. I'm going to yeah. introduce a new word. You know how they say yesterday? Mm -hmm. Well, I like yesternight, tonight, so I've, inc I've, I've invented that because oh. it's a good word. It was a fortnight ago. Yes, tonight. We don't have a word for last night. It takes no, too we long. don't. Yesternight. You're right. Yes, tonight. Or, Yesterday and yes, tonight. That and works. certainly this is night e. <laughs> so right for tomorrow's night. Exactly. Oh, Dan, you want to learn a Gaelic word, an Irish I'd, word? I'd love to. <laughs> okay. Is it a dirty um, word? Because it'll stick for sure. I got a chance. It is actually. Um. First off, the word is crack, and it crack. means fun. Like, I love crack. He's like, Amen. I love to have fun. I love fun, too. They, they, <laughs> they were having some great yeah. crack. They were having a some piece of fun. that Kit Kat bar there. Mm. Yep. And if crack. you want to say, I, I know a few words of Irish, yeah. you say, couple of fuckle. Well, I learned I, that cup, <laughs> cup, cup, wow. Um, I want to say that word really badly, uh, but I know it's not going to come out right. No, don't. And then you won't be able to monetize your channel. <laughs> well, I guess it's not cupola, but couple of fuckle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I learned how to say um, in Portuguese, awesome, and that's jumais. So oh, jumais. That's, that's all I can bring to the table. I, okay. I learned that last week. I learned another bad word in, in Portuguese last, word, last week that I can't say here, but um, very international. That always today. helps. That always helps. Very it does. It's really making the difference. Well, let's wish people a good start to the holiday yes. season. It is November Happy holidays first for sure. week. And that we may continue uh, yes. as a collective to do our self love and not even notice as it goes on by. And as I've said on my channel too before, by the way, just as a quick one, like in the comments, be supportive of other people. Understand that they're going through hard times too right yeah. now. And a lot of people are a little quick to throw the little coachiness out there when it's like, well, yeah, mm. but maybe they're not quite where you are with it. So just, yeah. just be understanding. Yeah, that's true. Comments. Remember that where you used to be. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. big time. I remember yeah. when I was, I was at there. that place too. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's a work in progress. Amen. I am. We both are. Yeah. I have a long way to go, frankly, and it's very upsetting. But I, I, I know I've been meaning to talk to you about that. I, I know. <laughs> I, I'm still taking steps forward, baby steps. Come on, Anya, <laughs> love me anyway. Okay, okay, I love you. I'm anyway. mostly nice. <laughs> I love it. Thank you both for doing God. this. This was great. Great way to Thank start a Saturday you. for me. Thank you. Guys. All right, I'm gonna. I'll just end, I'll end the meeting and then yes. we can say bye in private. So you can whip out any words that you couldn't say during the show. You can whip them out now. She said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs>